So the other day when I was helping re the restoration of the Red Rooster Inn, I had a quite literally a shocking experience. I melted through the teeth of this jaw of this cutter pretty well too. And this is like a $250 pair of cutters too. These are professional grade. So how did I cut through my, my friend's expensive wire cutters? Well, there was a 220 volt line, dual phase, not like what's in Europe. What we over here have is dual phase and so it has a lot more power. It's meant for running ovens and washing machines and furnaces and so like that. So there's a lot of power that can go through there. And there was also a communication issue and a trusting issue. So we were going through and ripping out the drywall in, the cert in that certain room. The, that room was made in 1915. But some other wiring had been added over the, the century. There was a 220 volt line there double phase and someone uh, someone said oh we should cut that with the sawzall and I was like no I want to I want to use those cool cutters that we have because these things work so so much nicer the sawzall just gets gets stuck but this thing cuts it cuts all the lines easily I've ripped out so much electrical cable with this but there's one worker named Tyler who it's his job at least he's kind of adopted the job that he goes around and he tests all the outlets and so like I'll ask him have you tested this and he'll be like yeah I've tested that it's off and so I so I ask like it, it, are you sure that's off because the other one was on when we thought it was off are you, are you sure and he, and he was like yeah it, it's it's off the entire this entire addition of the building is off and I was like hmm okay there's actually like a couple back and forth like are you sure but in the end, he, he, he reassured me, like, yeah, it's off. It wasn't off. So, I cut the 220 volt and pfft, just started shooting sparks and melting the hell out of this thing. It stopped after about 10 seconds. And I thought, oh, damn it. I popped the circuit breaker. So I went to go and do it. It kept going. It turns out it didn't have a fuse, it didn't have a circuit breaker or anything connected to that line. They had the line just kind of wedged through the rafters and stuff underneath the, 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 the building. And there's a big power box. Power comes in, there's the two fuses and the big breaker. You're supposed to have your stuff come out the top because that way you can turn off the power. They didn't do that. They came out the bottom. And so the, the, the switch, it's not switching anything. Why would you even have that then? Like, you have to run the power through the switch so you can turn it off. But they went underneath it and just connected it directly to the power coming to the building. So, effectively, I had all the power I could possibly want. Or all the power that the resistance of this thing could... I don't know if that's messing up the audio all the power that this thing could possibly want going through it and nothing was ever going to shut it off unless I pulled enough power to actually brown out the city so or at least that block with that transformer but still that we're talking like 300 kilowatt hours then 300 kilowatts of power then like enough power to to power to power an inn and power a courthouse because the courthouse is connected to it and power the police station and power the fire department like all that stuff is connected on the same on the same transformers so you would blow up the building if you were able to pull all that power so that was a huge pain because then so we have this thing stuck on the wire up in the second floor and the, the 220 volt wire and it's sparking every so often like really sparking and then we can't shut off the power without calling the the power company out and the power company will probably take eight hours to come out there they'll come out at like midnight they'll charge six thousand dollars to do it and then like yeah so so what we did was i gave john the, the owner i gave the owner my my leather gloves 
and we, I took an extension cable and I wrapped it around him and I was ready to pull him away from the power box if he got shocked. And um, yeah, we just, we unhooked that entire breaker box, the entire fuse box while it was live with 220 volts. Might have had 440 volts on there too, I'm not sure. But um, no sparks, so it's nice. That didn't go, that didn't go bad. So I'm happy with that. And we got that disconnected and then we were finally able to take this off and then finally cut the thing. But now I got to fix this and retemper the metal and weld back the part that got cut out. It makes me kind of mad because, I mean, like, it was that person's job to test the outlets. And in the end, I forgot that it was also my job to test the outlets if I'm going to be the one cutting the stuff. And so that it's 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 annoying whenever you can't trust other people i mean it's it's facts of life but it's just so fucking annoying because like i know if you're working with something dangerous you are the one that should be the final say and the final checker but i fell into a sense of a, a false sense of security trusting other people to do all the the checks you know like and the most annoying part is that it is my fault. So I find that really annoying. And just, yeah. I was a little scared at first because I thought I might have um, gotten retinal burn because the flash was quite bright. But it actually didn't turn out to be nearly as bright as like a welder. So my theory is that, well, the voltage is higher, but the amps are not higher because as soon as it makes a connection, it just melts, it vaporizes whatever it's connecting to, and so it doesn't have enough time to actually make a really hot, bright arc, or a big spark. So, in in many ways, it's actually not as bad as a welding rod or something like that, a welding arc, because a welder actually makes extre an extremely consistently hot point that gets extremely hot whereas that was more of just like throwing molten metal everywhere and just making different connections wherever it could make you know sparking on and off I don't know this that's my story about that how I killed these these clippers I still like these these wire cutters they're really nice but unfortunately they're John's father which I think his father might not be around anymore because he really wanted to keep these. So I was like, okay, I'll fix them, but I'll give them back, I guess. But, oh well. I'm going to see about recreating the incident because the biggest thing I regret is I didn't catch it on video. I, I didn't think it was going to be interesting. And so I didn't catch it on video, and I really regret that because... When else are you going to accidentally cut a 220 volt line that is not going to shut off from a circuit breaker or a fuse? You're just, unless it's intentional, you're not going to. And like, I don't personally remember what my reaction was. I remember adrenaline started rushing and then I, like a couple seconds later, I was like, I gotta get to the basement and turn off the breaker. That was a whole other mess because we couldn't find which there's like 20, 20 breaker boxes in that building. Half of them are disconnected, or so we thought. Then we actually checked them, and some of them weren't connected. So it's stupid wiring. It's over a hundred years of bad wiring. That's what it is. And yeah, it would have been nice to have that captured on video, but at least for the video that I filmed, because I filmed the, everything after that. Well. It was going to feel like, I feel, I fear it's going to be a very hollow feeling video if I don't have that moment. So I've decided I'm actually going to refilm that moment. Not at the building. Whoa. But I went there and I ripped out that wire, so I have the same exact wire. And uh, John doesn't want me to use this because he doesn't want me to put a second hole through it. Which, like, I'm going to be fixing it fully. So, but yeah, he doesn't want me to. So I can use my pair of bolt cutters that I have. 
I have several wool cutters I can just throw one away, I guess. But what I'm going to do is instead of hooking up to 220, because my 220 has a circuit breaker on it, so it'll just pop and turn off. It's not going to have that long lasting like 30 minutes of just And so I'm going to hook it up to my welder, my welder, my old 1939 or whatever welder that I have, because that will be able to keep the arc going without pulling too much power to to flip the breaker. So it should have a very similar effect. I don't know. I'll do that too tomorrow or something like that. I also got some other wires and I'll see what cutting through those. Just so, so we can have some videos of me cutting through wires and we can watch what catches on fire. But still, it really bugs me. Like the entire thing just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Because I mean, I know it. In the end, it is my fault. And it, it is just annoying. That you, it's annoying when you're reminded that you can't trust others to take care of you all the time like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And plus, like, not getting the shot. Just... Oh, well. Only thing to do is to move forward and I think reshooting the scene... Scene... I think they'll be okay, because, like, I'll, I'll have a video clip of me cutting a, another live wire, and then, whether that be out here, and then I can have, like, reenactment, but then at least someone will see, like, a, what the big sparks looked like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. See ya!